I'm very honored to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Aurelia Frick. She's the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Education and Culture of Liechtenstein. She's responsible for the Sustainable Development Goals and these so-called SDGs. Liechtenstein is, putting, is taking them very seriously, puts a very strong focus on them. Just one example, as a whole country, Liechtenstein tries to become CO2 neutral. That's as a first step. And from Dr. Aurelia Frick, we will hear now. She will give us some insights on um, what has been done already and what is in the pipeline. Please join me on stage. Morning to everybody. How sustainable do we want our lives to be? And how can we make our lives more sustainable? And what kind of life is truly sustainable in practice? You may think that these three questions are kind of the same. But if we take a closer look, there are some small differences. These differences I would like to explore with you today. The small differences that can have a big impact and may, in the end, change the world. Let's take a look at the first question. How sustainable do we want our lives to be? At the first glance, the answer to these questions seem clear. Of course we want our life to be as sustainable as possible. We want to reduce our environmental footprint, we want to be responsible in all aspects of our lives, for example, when we go to the supermarket or when we commute to work. We want to meet meat from happy cows. We want to eat healthy fish or eat tasty fruit and vegetables instead. We want to breathe fresh air and we want to help people who aren't as lucky as we are. As we, are. we want that all children are able to read and write, and we want everybody to find work that suits them and that fulfills them, without destroying the environment or each other. And we all want to live in a peaceful world, where politicians and business people act responsibly and do their part for a better world. These are a lot of wants, and all of this is very nice to want, but wanting is easy, doing is hard. And this is where the second question comes in. How can we make our lives more sustainable? Let's imagine two pictures. You may know these pictures. You can even buy them on T-shirts. They show two sides of the Earth. The title above the picture is Ego versus Echo. The first picture is ego. It shows a kind of a triangle with a human being, a man, no less, at the top of the triangle. Below him, a woman, animals, creatures of the sea, tiny insects, and nature. And on the other side, you see echo. This, pictures, this picture shows a circle. Women and men are equal beside each other. Surrounded by animal in the circle, nature, everything is round. How round is your personal circle? How round is my personal circle? And is it really a circle, or does it look more like a triangle, the way I live? To really claim we are living sustainably, it's not enough to separate our recycling from our trash even though it can be a really good start. And buying clothes from sustainable production won't make the triangle round, but it is a small first step. If we, knew, we use donations to dig a water well in Africa, we will not eliminate poverty and environmental destruction and climate change, change all at once, from the today to tomorrow. But maybe thanks to that well, one single village has better prospects for the future. There are countless ways to live sustainably. Some of these steps we can take by ourselves as an individual. I can take it. And individual contribution can have a major impact. 
but nobody can solve the problem of sustainability all alone. And this is one of the reasons where, why we are here today. Governments, NGOs, businesses, every individu individual citizen, we can only solve today's challenges together. Only together we can lead sustainable lives. And this leads us to the third question. What kind of life is truly sustainable in practice? To answer this question, I would like to mention Bea Johnson's book. Some of you certainly know her. She's the founder of the Zero Waste Lifestyle Movement. One and a half a year ago, she was in Liechtenstein and she had a speech. And I started to read her book. Her book is, has the title Zero Waste Home, and it is a real adventure story. She talks about how she got rid of all packaging material in her own home from one day to the next. She only bought product without waste. She made butter herself to save the paper the butter is wrapped in when we buy it at the supermarket. And she even did without toilet paper and used moss instead. So one day, Bea Johnson realized that even though her waste, her waste was zero, her lifestyle was nowhere near sustainable. For example, she had to drive hundreds of kilometers just to buy a product without packaging. She realized that as an individual, she can ac accomplish a lot and she can feel good about her contribution. But as long as the world is still organized in a such a way that we have to drive hundreds of kilometers just to make a sustainable lifestyle work, it is not sustainable. True sustainability is only possible if we find the right balance between the individual and the society, between us as individuals and us citizens, us as a country. Dear ladies and gentlemen, some of you might have children. I am lucky to be blessed with two beautiful children, one son and one daughter. My son turned six years last Sunday. He's born in the year 2012. And he will reach his legal age of 18 in, guess what, in the year 2030. What world are we putting our, in our children's hands in the generation of my son, Leonard? What will be the world like in 2030? It is just 12 years from now. The government of Liechtenstein adopted the sustainable development of the United Nations Agenda 2030. We take these goals very seriously, so seriously that we have linked them to the implementation of our government program for this legislative term. We have set out several priority areas, including education, food, security, access to clean water, integration and migration, where we believe we can have a major impact as a country, but as well as individual citizens. And we focus on gender equality, which is one of the topics I put an extra effort in, as I mentioned yesterday in my short statements I had here. I would like to see my daughter being treated equally, having equal chances, like my son, in the year 2030, when she turns out to be 18. And it doesn't matter what we do. We should do it. And in fact, we can only do it if women and men are equal beside each other. We try, as a government, to incorporate the Agenda 2030 in our daily work of our ministries, and of our government offices. And we are encouraging initiatives in the private sector to do the same. The state, obviously, has a very important role to play in implementing the Agenda 2030. But it is equally obvious that the state alone cannot achieve them. The state, the private sector and civil society, and indeed, indeed each and every single of us, is called upon to make our contribution. As an example of this cooperation between the state and the private sector and individual citizens, I would like to mention the Drink and Donate project. Yesterday, all of us who had ended the dinner got one bottle of the Drink and Donate program. 
This is part of our implementation of the Sustainable Development Goal number six, uh, number six, to ensure access to water and sanitation for all. Worldwide, 780 million people do not have access to clean water. The goal of the Drink and Donate project in Liechtenstein is to guarantee access to clean water for 38,000 people. In other words, one person of Liechtenstein for one person abroad. So far, we have reached 6,435 people and we are still counting. Liechtenstein may be small, but the individual Liechtenstein citizen is no smaller than anyone else. Our contribution as an individual does not depend on the size of our country. If, as an individual Liechtensteiner, we skip bottled water and drink tap water instead, and if we donate the saved money to help ensure someone else's access to clean water, then we are making the same contribution we would make as a citizen of a big country. This shows us that really everybody can contribute. It's no matter of size to make a difference. And I do hope that this conference today gives us all some inspiration of how to contribute to sustainable development, both in our private lives, but as well in our work. Personally, as a start, I was fascinated by Bea Johnson's book, and I will try to reduce waste at my home. I tried to go to a zero-waste shop that opened newly in Faduz, it's called Querbet. And I know this is a very small step, and this small step most probably makes a very small difference. But I would still like to take that step. I would also like that my children see that not everything is packed in, in plastic. And perhaps we can take other personal steps as well, by drinking tap water and donating drinking water, by reducing our meat consumption, or at least by eating meat from happy cows, by commuting to work by foot or by bicycle. And suddenly, many small steps may turn into something really big. And I hope that over the course of today, we can explore innovative solutions for how to coordinate our individual steps and achieve change that is truly sustainable. My final thoughts today, they go to Hannes Schmidt. I first met Hannes Schmidt in the Kunstmuseum some eight months ago. I recall that day, day was overplanned and overbooked. Most probably I arrived a bit too late, Hannes, to our lunch. I'm sorry for that. But Hannes was sitting there quietly. He opened his book and he started telling me his story. He showed me the picture of that three-year-old girl with the face and the girl he picked up on the bridge. And suddenly, out of a full agenda, I was with you in Cambodia in my thoughts. And when we said goodbye to each other, I knew I want Liechtenstein to play a small part in the life of Hannes Schmidt. So we are here today. I'm glad I'm here. Thank you for the invitation. I'm standing here as a politician. And of course, I am having strong visions about my country and about how Liechtenstein should look like in the year 2030. I have a personal vision that Liechtenstein reaches again the ODA percentage of 0.7%. I have a personal vision of reaching real gender equality between men and women in Liechtenstein by 2030. I have a personal vision that my daughter is having the same possibilities like my son is going to have. I have a personal vision since yesterday that we can strengthen the dialogue between our industry, between our NGOs in Liechtenstein, between civil society and the society in Liechtenstein, and our government to be able to reach more than we do today. I have a vision to become the thorough zero greenhouse gas emission country worldwide. You see, I do have a lot of visions. But honestly, sometimes we politicians, we need people like Hannes Schmidt, 
who take us out of our comfort zones, of our offices, who take us on a journey like you have taken me, Hannes, on your journey to Cambodia and to these kids. I think we all sometimes need people like Hannes, who dedicate their whole life for something better, who take us politicians out of where we comfortably think we do a small step. So I'm standing here as a politician, I'm standing here as a citizen, and I'm standing here as a mother. And I would like to say thank you to you, Hannes, for sharing your personal story with me eight months ago in the Kunstmuseum. I say thank you. Thank you very much for this really touching, touch, touching speech. Um, now we would open, like to open to the audience. If there are any questions, now is the time to ask them. We have a microphone over there. No questions from the audience? So let me ask, ask if you... <laughs> yes, please. please. Yeah, exactly. You said um, you've been ta politicians do need people who take them out of their comfort zone, who have been taken out of your comfort zone. In that moment when that happened, when you listen to the story, the Honors story into the Cambodian project, um, what did change? You know, what, was this the moment where you said, okay, now I have to do something? Yes. I just sometimes think, I mean, I once in a while, not very often, I go and visit projects we do from our humanitarian aid uh, development center, the foundation. We are working with very closely with the government. And I just think sometimes we need to, to get out and we need to see the people and look in their eyes. Because when we sit in the office and when we talk in our parliament, when I ask in our parliament, we should have some 10 millions more to do humanitarian aid and to make an impact mm. in other countries. It is so difficult. You get criticism from all the sides and all the people start saying, why don't you do it at home? I mean, there are poor people at home as well. And then you need these pictures and these emotions and this true belief that it's not like a water drop mm. on a hot stone, but it is for something real, real you truly believe in. Otherwise, you sometimes don't survive as a politician with that vision. You need the passion. Yes. Hey, and the goal. But you said many little steps become something really big and can change something. And um, I did sometimes have the criticism you just said, do it at home, change something at home. But also Liechtenstein is trying that. And you mentioned an initiative that I'm interested in, the gender, uh, the gender equality, I mean the 2030 uh, CSD. What are the concrete steps Liechtenstein is doing, working towards this initiative mm -hmm. and to reach its goal? I come from a citizen party, liberal party. So within a very liberal party, it is very difficult to stand up for gender equality. No, it's not difficult to stand up for gender equality. It is difficult to make a real change. So for the last 10 yeah. years, for the last 10 years, I have been advocating and saying we need more women in, politi in politics, we need more women participating in, in the high level, in, in the boards of the industry. So I advocate for that. But I somehow realized that in the last 10 years, the numbers didn't really change. Mm. So I stand up, coming from a Liberal Party, I stand up and say, we need quota for a certain amount of time. And I know... Even quota. We need quota, I know, and it's very unpopular. It's very unpopular within my own party. And it puts me into a corner of shame, coming from a Liberal Party, standing up for that. But I have a true belief, if we don't do something and if we don't stand up for that, it will not change. Liechtenstein is ranked, I'm not honored to say that, but we are ranking on rank 147 when it comes to participation of women in politics. I mean, we sit in the heart of Europe. Mm. We are a highly modern, industrialized country. We have so many as well women sitting in here participating. But what, what is happening with this politics? So I have a true belief we need to change something. And at the moment, I'm standing a little bit in the corner of calling for quotas because I truly believe that we need it's a to whole make topic a step. everywhere. Yeah, we yeah. need to make a step. And you know, as two women up here, let's just talk about this for the next hour. No, it's okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but I definitely will have, will, will, will talk to you more about that. Um, 
One more thing, one more personal question I have. You showed us before these two different lifestyles, right? The ego lifestyle, the triangle, and the eco lifestyle, the, the, the circle. Where is your life? How does your life look like? More like a triangle or more like a, more like a circle? I mean, you've read the book already. Yes. So. <laughs> I try to become more around, but honestly... My life is still kind of a triangle. I came here with my car, not by bicycle. I try to walk to my office, though. I treat to, honestly, I try to eat less. I love meat. I, treat, I try to eat less meat to make a small contribution. Okay. How do you handle this no waste home? <sighs> I bought this, I go to this store called Querbeet. It's a new store in Liechtenstein. And you buy these kind of glass boxes, these romantic old ones, you know, from your That's grandmothers. And you, you dig the rice and the lenses out of kind of these kind of things. So you buy it by kilogram. Yeah. It's a fun thing. Kids love it. So I try to do that. So you, can, you are a good always. example. You are a good example. Not yet. Good, I try to work Try on to be a good example. Yeah. Not all for your kids as a mother, for, for the, uh, as a politician for your country. And I thank you very much I say thank for you. being here today with us. Thank you.